Um, so I wanted to talk about this issue of the micropolitical, sorry, <laughs> of the micropolitical of, of a camp that actually is a potentiality because there are so many new, new uh, people. Uh, and there is not a lot of professional activists, which actually is the potential itself. But I think what for me has been important, is, is spe specifically, let's say, the Barcelona example, which is the one I kind of knew most because I was there um, in the in the kind of consultas in, in the barrios, yeah? How do you bring the camp into different neighborhoods? That's one question. Second question, Oakland, LA, was um, a unionist. The unions actually participating, and not taking over, but actually participating in a way in which community organizing was happening, and janitors and other kind of like service workers were actually put in the middle as well to discuss poverty, to discuss, mm -hmm. uh, you know, neoliberal kind of like subcontracting or whatever <coughs> it is, um, and to actually link these pieces. And I think in Amsterdam right now, you know, there's the domestic workers, there's the cleaners who are actually actively today um, organizing strikes and so on. Um, and so there are, there are all these kind of movements that we need to kind of be attracted by each other in some way. Um, what I really liked about Barcelona was precisely the, 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 the potential that they had with the cuts in the public sector <laughs> to really uh, link with nurses and, and health workers. Because actually the fights were not just about the internal kind of micro, you know, fascist, uh, we say, it just internally discussion, but actually link to the cuts, link to the artists, link, link to the healthcare, link to the service workers in strikes, and so on and so forth. And then bring that into the space in order to make a brief, yeah? And in order to link it to some kind of aim, if you will. Because I think the problem is that if we don't have any kind of offensive fight, when we're just kind of, the long term is just, the camp and the exhaustion and you know I just had a baby so I know about sleep and, and, <laughs> um, and you go crazy and you snap at each other and all this kind of shit um, but really what is it that we're asking for of ourselves and then hopefully of states and, and private institutions that are having taken advantage of the system and so the, the issue for me is how do we come offensive as well? How do we actually have proposals? How do we help movements win something? How do we make it somewhat concrete? How do we help a squad not be evicted? How do we, how, how do, we do that? And um, it is kind of like this idea of, of breathing in and out and, and linking through micropolitics. And so for me, it's like how, how then Amsterdam becomes, you know, or anywhere we are really, because how do we have this kind of imagination because otherwise I do think it becomes so internal and so exhaustive and we don't have any kind of victories if you will or, or something that we can tangibly have at hand and so the question then is how how do we do it or, or you know if, if there, these movements will will continue will be a potential for the future because I think that the fear is that it will collapse on itself it will just be an anti-globalization movement actually <laughs> that kind of like did its enunciation but it didn't really achieve actually fighting back in a substantial way so for me it is kind of like how do we win this and um, in Amsterdam or anywhere else because that's precisely now the challenge right yeah my, my question is on the back of that, and it's, it's the flip side of it, and it's, just, it's actually a question to you, Michael, and I'm interested to hear your observations, perhaps it's not the best question to have at the end of the session, but I'm interested to hear your observations as somebody who's written fairly extensively on the question of radical democracy, particularly your observations on the problems of violence, and, and, and how you figure, um, where does violence figure in the ontology of the multitude, for example? Um, and, and, reflecting perhaps on some of these problems, um, but also perhaps some other problems. We see this issue coming up again when we see, you know, um, uh, antagonistic outbursts and riots in London, for example, which we would like to think is a kind of biopolitical uprising and, and connected to the kinds of uh, antagonistic practices that you're writing about. And yet we fall back continually on this problem of on this problem of violence. And I don't mean violence in terms of physical violence, I mean the foundational violence of community. And I think that's a question that we need to grapple with, and I'd be interested in your observations on that. Do we have any No, no, no. Well, uh, 
I can't quite answer the question, but what, in, what, what fits in the context, I think, is that um, I'm interested in, in many of the ways that, that many of the encampments have <coughs> shifted the practices of violence of, previous, of a previous generation. Like they, in some ways, have avoided a, a certain cliche of violence that was at least was built up around anti in the ultra globalization movements. Mm -hmm. You know, a cliche might I mean like fighting with cops and breaking windows, more or less. Um, and that that that's really I mean it's partly that I think one of the things that really interests me about Amsterdam, and I'm going to shift a little bit with this. One of the things that really interests me about the discussion today, that seems to be common with elsewhere, is this. One is the dynamic between. Uh, People new to activism and and experienced activists, which is clearly one of the dynamics here, and also seems to me both exciting and, and difficult. That was true also in, in in Madrid and Barcelona, and then also in in New York too. Each of those ridiculed really are leading by experienced activists, and then sometimes manage to uh, bring them together. Um, I guess that's partly related to the violence question because I think there are different practices. Of, of, it's partly of gaining attention that, that, that is related to the violence. Um, and the other one, which I'm just, I think I can't even make it as a question to you, but to, I'm interested in it, how the participation of <laughs> artists was so central in the Occupy Wall Street, or at least certain artists, certain artist groups. 16 Beavers mm -hmm. collective starting things, and then the U.S. artists here. I'm, I'm curious about, and I think it does relate to this people bringing people who are not experienced activists into it. I, I don't know if you could have any direct thing about why it, the way experience as artists that that define at least these experiences, Wall Street and, and Amsterdam. Maybe I could just leave it that it's an interesting it's an interesting fact. It's an interesting fact that there are that there is that um, central component of artists in these encampments. I yeah, I wanted to add maybe there is the, one of the main problems in my opinion with Occupy generally is there's already a distinction in the sense that you're present in a space and other people are absent. Mm -hmm. There it starts. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe for some artists they could it sounds a little, I'm, I, I'm an artist myself, but <laughs> you can use it, that's your artwork, so you have the time and the, and the concentration to be there and try to make the place, the space occupy, as in Burst Plan, your space. And then other people feel that they're excluded, not necessarily because you are <coughs> excluding them, but they're not spatially there, so and there, there's already this distinction. So maybe that's also... I was just thinking about the thing of how to bring people together and the issue of, of the health workers and the, every, everybody else. And it's not really an answer to it, it's just something that I noticed as well on the first plane. There was a, a guy called, called Hank whose story was that he had been a shipbuilder, a welder. It's what he knew how to do. He was, and that's unusual for the Netherlands, he literally he didn't know how to read and write, but he could read a plan of how to weld the ship together, and that's what he did. And at some point, he got an iron girder on his back. And he had been in, uh, he'd had uh, money from, I don't even know what the initials are, the acronyms for healthcare money, uh, in order to, insurance to, to tide him over. This had been cut, and he'd calculated precisely, he was just surviving at the moment on the money he was getting, having been injured and been un unable to do anything else. Um, he, was, he was at the burst plane every day. He went home to sleep, and he was at the burst plane for the rest of the day, from morning till night. And... Um, he calculated that with the cuts that were coming, he was going to be structurally 10 euros to put, <coughs> now 10 euros too little every month, and that was going to build up, and he wasn't going to be able to go. And that's why he was at the British plane, that was his story. And so I asked him, there must be thousands of people in a similar situation, and why is it that they're not here? Why is it? I mean, I can't answer the question, I can't, but it, but it did surprise me, and it is that lack of solidarity, but of course, if we talk about 40 years of political apathy, there's been many, many years as well of convincing us that we shouldn't have this solidarity, that we, that we are not in solidarity with one another, and that it's a bad thing to be in solidarity with one another. And so that attitude is something like the political apathy that has to be overcome, I think, in order to... Um, why that hasn't yet happened. But it, 
was also a reason for me personally for, for, for feeling uncomfortable with this march, march of civilization, march of prescribing, because I felt that where were we as artists when we're fighting for the cultural cuts? Where were we when the health cuts were happening? Why were we not as artists um, a massive, massive presence there as well? I do think it's a problem. I don't know how to do it. I think it's no, very important. That's why I thought Occupy was quite interesting. Yeah. But about coming back to the uh, question of like, what are the things that are being present there? I think. Yeah. Well, I, well, for me, for my like, for my background, like I like my work already deals with democratization, so it's kind of like was like very natural thing to be there. Um, but I do, I don't see it as a project at all, and I also don't see it as like a, as something easy for an artist to do because you have like you know like you can see it in the line of your work. It was. It, it is not a project, and we are like also the the, uh, the, the collective that took care of our tent is not, they are not all artists. <laughs> they are like, we started with artists and then lots of other people joined. So it was not all artists. And then, um, and I think it was quite a statement because like usually I'm like a precarious worker. I work for like, I, I, I worked, um, I don't know how many, hours are there in a week, but I sleep sometimes in between. And for the rest I work and I have like go from project to project and like going to the Bruce Plan was also like a like a real like kind of like a statement towards myself. I, 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 I cancelled the project I was doing like we were supposed to do in Finland. Didn't have income and just put the tent there. So it was it was and but it was not a project. It was because I really wanted to um, be part of this learning process of democratization in public space. And see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. 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 The fund bunker, I think, also to continue and also to find, like, uh, I mean, from this discussion, but anyway, for the experience of Occupy Amsterdam, but also from other practices, uh, art, uh, yeah, species of activism, or to also, I mean, to connect with what Valerie was saying, or to, to find also like some political goals and to go farther, no, and also to look outside and how we can connect with other campaigns and uh, with other movements that uh, are in Amsterdam and try to do something. And I think it's really important to create a connection with all these, uh, um, yeah, campaigns that are around. Anyway, well, uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming.